Hello, hello everyone. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, it's just six o'clock now, so we're just going to give it about one or two more minutes to allow people to finish logging in, and um, then we'll get started with our programming. Thanks for being here again. Okay, everybody, I think in the interest of um, being respectful to everybody's time, we're going to get started and just let people continue to join us um, as they are able. But I wanted to uh, thank you again for joining us. My name is Rachel Janowski. I'm the Director of Admissions for Milwaukee Lutheran. We are so excited that you are taking the time to join us tonight. And uh, we are really excited to share uh, what great things Milwaukee Lutheran has to offer, um, not only you as a family, but your student as well. Um, before I actually show um, some stuff about who's going to be helping us out tonight, I did want to just reiterate what's up on the screen that um, in order to have the best experience for, for your viewing tonight, we just recommend that um, you click on the view. It, it should be on the top right hand corner of um, your computer screen. If you're on the phone, it might not be that way. But if you can choose to view it in side by side speaker view, you're going to have whomever is speaking pop up on your screen and then that way uh, you'll be able to see visually who's talking to you. So um, we would encourage you to view in side-by-side -side speaker view. Um, if you can just leave your videos off and keep your sound muted, we'll be able to um, hopefully get through things in a um, good fashion as far as time goes. And um, I also want to um, talk in a second about how you can ask questions tonight because we certainly expect that there might be something that you want to know and we would hopefully um, love to share that with you. So. Hang on to that for a second, I'll get there in a minute. But um, I do want to introduce some people that are going to help us tonight. And hold on one second here. There we go. Um, the admissions team here at Milwaukee Lutheran is um, a group of people that I get to work with very closely, obviously. Again, my name is Rachel Janowski. Um, so blessed to be able to serve you guys as incoming families. But I also have a team of a wonderful people that are behind the scenes tonight helping out Mrs. Janke, Mr. Reckley, and Mr. Janowski. And I just wanted to point them out and, and give you a picture with their names so you can maybe see who's helping behind the scenes. They obviously have put in a ton of work for tonight and I just wanted to acknowledge that. So thank you to all of you. And um, as always, if you have any questions, um, you're going to be able to contact us at the information that is obviously on the screen, but we will be sending you this information as a follow up so you don't need to scramble to write things down tonight. Um, we will send you not only the PowerPoint we're using this evening, but also a bunch of other great resources later. Um, as I mentioned, you might have questions throughout the night and we encourage you to ask them, but it's going to be in a different way than uh, we would really like. We would love to answer your questions in person, but we are um, going to have to ask that this in this format you answer them in or ask them in the chat. 
So um, one of the things that makes it a little complicated is because I'm the host of the meeting. My name, I think, comes up first in the chat, but I'm going to ask that if you have questions, you direct them to either Tom Reckley, which comes up as T. Reckley, or Debbie Jenke, and she's D. Jenke, um, in your chat feature, and you can privately message either of them, and they're ready to answer your questions tonight. Um, we might answer them directly back to you in a private chat. We might um, interject and ask the questions out loud, or um, if time doesn't allow, we may also follow up with an email with our answer later as well. So that's what happens if you have a question. Make sure you are private chatting T. Reckley or D. Jenke with those things. I would love to introduce to you our principal. Um, his name is Mr. Adam Kirsch, and he's going to share some um, beginning thoughts and prayer with us tonight. Thanks, Mrs. Janowski. Uh, if we can, I'd love to. Uh, start with prayer. Uh, you can hear me okay, Mrs. Uh, Janowski? Great, thanks. Let's pray. Uh, Lord God, we thank you for this evening and for the opportunity that we have uh, for these families that are joining us. Lord, we ask uh, that you bless our time together. Uh, Lord, we get the opportunity to share about this school. It's about your school and it's about these people. It's about the students that we serve, uh, the faculty that serves them. Uh, we ask that you would keep them safe, that you would protect them, that you would keep them healthy in these uncertain times. And through all things, uh, we pray that your name be glorified. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. I want to share just a little bit uh, about the school as an introduction. And uh, uh, one of the things that I think is important is for you to understand uh, both the mission, vision, and values of our school. As we go through this presentation tonight, I think that uh, there will be a number of things that you'll be able to see on the screen, uh, but we probably won't be able to hit everything. And so Mrs. Janowski indicated that you'll be able to uh, go back and review this uh, as it's sent out later on. But one of the things that I think is, is vitally important is for us to share the mission that we have and, and how that mission gets lived out. Uh, our mission is to share Jesus, shape lives, and develop leaders. Uh, and so certainly, as we just did, we prayed. Uh, we pray uh, to a God that we, say, that we believe uh, instills within us truth, uh, a truth that is found in Jesus Christ, a truth that is revealed uh, in Scripture, which we believe to be His Word. And so the first part of our mission is every day we hope to inspire our kids to grow in their own relationship with Jesus Christ. And most importantly, to experience his love and then through us for them to be able to experience love. That love is really important. Uh, growing in love means that we grow in relationship with each other. And whether that is with fellow students or whether that is with the faculty and staff here it is really lived out as we shape lives, as those relationships are formed that not only prepare our students academically, uh, but also socially and spiritually for what comes after high school. We, just as much as all of you, want your child to be successful. Uh, we want your child to have purpose. We want them to be useful. And so as we work to shape lives within that mission, uh, it's not only the fact that we get the opportunity to challenge them, but also that we work alongside them to support them during a critical and crucial four years of their life. And I think that one of the most important things that students begin to question and begin to uh, grapple with during these years of high school is about their identity and their purpose. Um, every, we believe every student has been given specific gifts, special talents, unique interests. And so the third part of our mission, developing leaders, means that those gifts are nurtured uh, and they're developed to serve others. And so share Jesus, shape lives, develop leaders. It's the faith component, it's the relationship component, and that it's also the preparation for what's going to come after high school. All three of those things need to be lived out, and I believe they are by an incredible group of faculty and staff uh, every day. And, and it's our prayer that our students experience success, not just in what they do, uh, but in who they are. Certainly, I want to highlight our spiritual life a little bit, uh, something that is extremely important to us. Uh, we have uh, multiple opportunities for our kids to grow in that relationship with, with Jesus Christ. Um, right, what you see here on the left is, uh, is a picture of our chapel. Uh, and a time where we gather three times a week 
to, to sing, uh, to also hear that message from scripture. We, we do it in small groups, which meet multiple times during a week. We do it in prayer and devotion opportunities within our school day. It's done within religion classes that all of our students take. And so we are intentional about sharing our faith in Jesus Christ. We're intentional about leading students to grow in their own relationship with Jesus Christ. And then we're also intentional about finding ways for our students to serve. And I think that one of the, the unique opportunities that we have here at Milwaukee Lutheran High School is actually our music ministry. And we're going to highlight this just for a, a little bit because it's such an extension of our mission uh, in general. It, it's, it's one of the most powerful ways that we have to share our mission. And so I know that Mr. Creighton is going to share a little bit more about fine arts later on, but I just wanna highlight uh, our music programs. This, this chance that we have to proclaim the message of faith through the arts. Uh, what, what you see uh, there is, is in our chapel, uh, we have a small group ensemble called Joyful Noise uh, that uh, is our worship team. And, and not just that small group, but we have many other ensembles, both large group and small group. Um, here at Milwaukee Lutheran, we have three different bands, all the way from beginner to advanced. We have a drumline program with, uh, with both beginner and advanced. We have a marching program. Uh, there's multiple choirs. Uh, we have seven choirs. We, every period of the day has a choir uh, assigned to it. Uh, it's, it's such an important part of the ministry that we have. Um, and so it's not just about uh, the concerts or the competitions, but it's also about some of the unique opportunities that we have within our music program. Things like travel, where uh, we go on tour with our kids, uh, hosting uh, retreats and things within our school where, again, our mission is lived out as relationships are formed. I think one of the most... <clears throat> excuse me, amazing things about our music program is just the, the sheer number of students that participate. We have over 400 students in our music program. Over half of our, almost half of our students uh, are, in, are in one of the two music programs, band or choir. We have uh, over 300 students that are in choir. And so it is not just a incredibly attractive program, one that kids are engaged with, but it's also a way for us to share our faith in Jesus Christ. And so uh, that, that music uh, department is such a critical and crucial part of us achieving our mission. Thank you, Mr. Kirsch. Appreciate all your words. Um, we're going to uh, move on from the uh, kind of the cornerstone of our, of our building, um, and that's the spiritual life components. Um, and the fine arts to learning a little bit more about our student activities and organizations that we have in our building. And to talk to us about that is going to be um, two people. Miss Rachel Vonderheide is going to join us as well as Miss Carissa Eim. And they're going to speak um, both about student activities and um, things that you can do to get involved in organizations. Thank you, Mrs. Janowski. Uh, as Mr. Janowski mentioned, my name is Ms. Vonderheide, Rachel Vonderheide, and I am the Student Activities Director here at Milwaukee Lutheran. So I run our Student Council organization. And the real purpose of Student Council is to get our students engaged outside of the classroom. So we want them getting involved. We want them to be shaping their lives in the classroom, but outside of it as well. And then also helping to develop leaders. So I have team members that lead their peers within student council. And then we have different organizations here as well that students can hone in on those leadership skills. So within student council, we plan really fun events for our student body. Last month, a lot of our students went roller skating and had a blast doing that. Um, this month later on, they're having a paint night, so they'll learn how to paint a holiday painting. And then homecoming is a really, really fun event for our student body. They always love getting involved dressing up on theme days, going to the football game, enjoying the dance. As a school, we also look to serve, and Mr. Kirsch uh, touched on that a little bit. So our students with Student Council, our community service organization plans blood drives, they plan food drives, and they find other ways each year to give back to the community. And that also helps shape them as individuals. Within the student council outside of, or sorry, within Milwaukee Lutheran, outside of student council, 
We have a lot of other clubs and organizations that our students can get involved in. We have National Honor Society, an engineering club, yearbook club, martial arts club, just to name a few. And something I really like about Milwaukee Lutheran is that if our students want a club and it's not one that we currently offer, they have the opportunity to find a teacher and to start that club, which I think is really cool for our students and really helps them discover their leadership skills. So as I kind of started out with and I'll end with, uh, we really look to get our students engaged outside of the classroom while also getting them engaged inside the classroom. Thank you, Rachel. Appreciate those words. Um, as you can hopefully hear from her, it's a, it's a way for students to uh, kind of make their high school experience a little bit more well-rounded, I guess you could say. And um, we really see a lot of um, people, a lot of students grab onto that. And um, when they are getting into their junior and senior year and start getting into those leadership roles, um, you can just see them shining as people who are gonna be um, ready to leave and offer the communities that they're going out into um, great leadership once they leave this place. We're gonna sh um, have Ms. Eim share a little bit more about another opportunity for our students to be involved and, um, and that is in the drama department. Hi everyone, uh, so happy to be here and to see you. Uh, even if it's through a screen, I'm just happy to uh, talk with you and share with you about some of the wonderful things that Milwaukee Lutheran offers and uh, extracurricular activities, uh, especially with drama. So as uh, Mrs. Janowski said, I am head of the drama department at Milwaukee Lutheran. And we usually typically put on three plays a year. We have uh, two regular plays. Uh, one of them is more of a drama and uh, our most recent one was Raisin in the Sun, and that was absolutely wonderful. The kids really used their God-given talents to uh, bring that play to life. Uh, we also usually have a winter children's theater, which is so fun because the students get to really just have fun with little kids who come to see the play. And uh, our most recent one was the Elves and the Shoemaker. So super fun, kind of around Christmas time. And then we usually have also a spring musical. So uh, that's where a lot of students can get involved. Even if they're not interested in acting, there's many different ways to get involved in the drama department. So obviously there's the acting portion if you wanna be more theatrical. Uh, there's also the backstage. So if you wanna be involved, but are like, oh, no, I don't wanna act. Uh, you could help being part of the set crew. Uh, some of the individuals, the students who come on the stage, move the props on and off, move the sets. Uh, if you're more hands-on, you can help paint the sets and even build them. And that's really cool too, because you can build up all kinds of different uh, skills and skill sets and learn how to build and construct um, the sets and the stage. And there's also in the musical, a lot of uh, opportunities to be involved if you really like dancing. So if you're still like acting, not my thing, but you love to dance, uh, there's a whole ensemble that you can join. And it's just really great opportunities to meet a whole bunch of really great kids, uh, other students who will, um, uh, are gonna be lifelong friends and you learn and you grow together. And it's just a really great opportunity to get involved. And even just to come and see the place, to see, how God has truly blessed some of your fellow classmates with all of these different talents and to see how so many different kinds of students come together to create like one big thing is just one of my favorite things to do. Uh, and I definitely encourage uh, everyone to come and see them. Uh, another really excellent opportunity that I personally do aside from drama is I am in charge of the forensics club and it is not forensic science. So we don't like solve murders and things. It's uh, public speaking and we do different competitions. And a lot of students who join uh, especially do like spoken word poetry and they perform with other students from other schools and they compete and it looks great on resumes and it helps you with your public speaking skills. And it's also an opportunity for you to be creative, um, to write your own pieces and to perform and to share your opinions with other students from other schools. So I am very big on public speaking, whether that's in theater or in forensics. And I just really encourage all of you to please come and talk to me uh, if you attend Milwaukee Lutheran so 
we can continue to grow in your God-given talents and in public speaking uh, throughout your high school career, as Mrs. Janowski said, to help you uh, just really become more well-rounded. And just to kind of reiterate what and echo what Ms. Vonderheide said, there's so many cool clubs and activities to get involved in and just create and uh, find your own place and find other students who share a lot of your same interests. Thank you so much, Ms. Syme. I um, hope that even though we are not in person, which we really wish we were because I think that the energy in our open house room is something that can't be matched from um, a computer screen. I hope that you're feeling um, Ms. Iams' energy and the energy of some of our teachers because um, she's an English teacher here and if you take her class, energy is a word that definitely is going to be used when it comes to her classroom. Um, so learning, being fun and things like that, you're gonna see from um, not only her but other teachers like Ms. Vonderheide and others in the building. So thank you for your time. I really appreciate you ladies sharing um, some of the stuff that the students can get involved in. I just want to put up on the screen one more time. Um, just as a reminder, maybe some of you joined in a little bit after we got started. If you have questions, since um, we can't ask them face to face, unfortunately, we, we still want to try to answer those for you. Um, we do have a lot of programming where we're going to try to get to a lot of stuff. But if you have something that you really want to know, please private chat T. Reckley or D. Janky. Um, you should be able to see them in your chat window and, and privately send them a message and they can either answer it right in their chat or um, maybe even have us interject and answer it out loud or maybe send a follow-up email. So T. Reckley or D. Janky is who you want to chat your questions to if you have them tonight. But as a reminder, we will be sending you a bunch of resources, um, especially everything that we're discussing tonight, so you have that available at your disposal as well. We are going to move on to um, talk to Mr. Ellenberger. Mr. Ellenberger is our athletic director, and he's going to um, actually talk a lot later tonight and dive much deeper into things. So his is going to be just a quick little short overview. Um, but Mr. Ellenberger, thank you for joining us. You're very welcome. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon or this evening. Um, I'll echo what Mrs. Janowski said. This would be just phenomenal to be uh, person to person, face to face. But I think we're making a, a good thing out of out of the best situation here. Um, as she said, I'm, I'm privileged to serve as the athletic director here at Milwaukee Lutheran High School. I'm in my first year after being a graduate in 2003 and I'm teaching here since 2008. So this is a place that's special to me as it is to many of our faculty who are alumnus um, of Milwaukee Lutheran. Um, I'll echo Mr. Kirsch as well. Our entire focus in athletics is to continue to build and serve and, and grow the kids that are blessed to be in our care and that we're blessed to have the opportunity to work with. Um, and as I'll echo a little later in, in my presentation in the athletics breakout, our coaches are here to serve your kids and they are just here to love the heck out of them and teach them and, and serve them and that's the purpose of athletics our athletic program fits into the mission and the vision and the brand of our high school uh, as best as anything can um, I will continue to just express to you the fact that we're just going to work with your kids we're going to love them we're going to teach them we're going to serve them and we're going to try to give them that best opportunity through um, the vehicle of athletics um, we offer a wide variety of athletic opportunities for your kids to be a part of um, including fall sports like like football, um, girls golf and tennis and swim, um, cross country, which is a co-ed sport, um, volleyball for the ladies, uh, boys soccer and cheerleading. Uh, cheerleading also continues into the winter time as well. So they have the opportunity there to participate possibly in two seasons. Um, also in the winter, we've got boys and girls basketball, um, wrestling and boys swim. And then as we transition into the spring, we have another really robust offering of athletics, including track and field, um, softball for the ladies, baseball for the boys, girls soccer, boys tennis, boys golf, and even an unfamiliar sport, but a pretty popular sport in our, in our community, and that is trap shooting. Um, the key into all of these is our coaches are willing to work with each and every one of our athletes and teach them and, and learn them, and I'll hit on that a little bit more later. Um, we're also very blessed to have a campus that is just um, extremely useful for what we do in athletics. Everything from our main football and soccer stadium um, to our, our, our you know, very spacious field house where we can fit four different basketball teams practicing at a time. A recently renovated gymnasium that's just a gorgeous energy-filled facility um, for some of our, uh, our big-time athletic events, namely our basketball games on Tuesdays and Friday nights when there's just an energy in there that you can feel. Um, we're blessed with both a baseball and a softball field on campus as well as an indoor and outdoor track so we can hold our track meets 
tournaments and things in those places. Uh, we're also blessed to be one of the few private schools in the area that has their own swimming pool. Um, so we can sponsor our swim teams on campus here, not only for practice, but for our own meets and invitationals, which is just awesome. Um, and kind of a unique thing that you don't necessarily notice unless you travel to the east side of our campus is our ropes course and our indoor rock climbing wall in the field house, which is utilized through PE and for other um, skill building and leadership building activities. Um, so I, I look forward to speaking with you a little bit later and giving our coaches a chance to talk with you a little bit more about their specific sports. Um, and as hopefully future Red Knights, uh, we're looking forward to seeing you fit into that, that Red Knight athletic family here at Milwaukee Lutheran. So thank you for a little bit of your time now and I look forward to speaking to you a little more later. Thank you so much, Mr. Ellenberger. As he just alluded to, um, our programming for tonight is just a general session for 6 to 6.30. We're going to hear about athletic or academics, um, kind of dive deep into academics right after that from 6.30 to 7 for those of you that want to stick around for that portion. And then we'll get back into athletics and hear from some of the specific coaches from um, 7 to 7.30. So just to know the timeline, you're welcome to kind of come and go as you please for that. Um, but we're going to hear quickly from Mr. Barr next. Mr. Barr is our assistant principal here at Milwaukee Lutheran, and he's going to um, give you a quick summary of the academic piece of Milwaukee Lutheran, but just knowing, too, that um, we're going to dive deeper into this a little bit later for the academic-specific session. Thank you, Mrs. Janowski. We are going to dive a little bit deep into this, uh, just about another 10 minutes here, five, 10 minutes or so. Um, thank you, though, for you guys for coming out tonight. Um, I pray that you and your families are safe uh, during this unusual time that we're having in the world. Um, it makes it very unusual to, to educate your, your child. Uh, last spring, uh, when COVID was sprung upon us, um, we were able to actually, Milwaukee Lutheran, to take a step right away. Uh, we have already had an online platform for learning um, through Schoology, and so our students were able to learn all last spring um, and even now into this fall. And I commend our teachers because our teachers have pretty much been doing two jobs since we began the school year this year, because we have a, about half of our students right now are currently fully online. Um, the other half of our students come in the building in two separate groups, two days a week. Um, our teachers are teaching both in the building and online at the same time. So um, we are here to serve your, your kids in whichever way we can possible in this crazy world that we live in right now. Um, and so we're very grateful for that. Academically, as you see on the screen too, uh, we offer over 167 courses here at Milwaukee Lutheran. And that number continues to grow each and every year. Academically, we are here to serve your child, um, no matter which area they're in, really. Um, for kids who may need a little more remedial help, um, we have classes, especially in our core academic areas, that are there to help them get caught up to grade level, to, to further their skills and to grow. We've got a regular track as well, too, of just your, your typical uh, freshman courses you may take, as well as a third honors track for those students who need to be challenged and pushed all the way through. So we really serve all three areas of students. Um, our core classes of English, math, science, Social studies and religion are five core areas um, that our students have. Um, we are there to prepare you college prep uh, material, but sometimes we realize that college may not be for everybody and that's okay. Uh, we have a ton of elective options um, in the arts, in career and tech ed, um, and so many other areas, business, free enterprise, that we're able to really individualize the education for each and every student that we have here, uh, which makes us really unique. We're really the only school um, in the area here that, that is private Lutheran education at the same time of serving kids who are going into tech ed, to careers, to healthcare um, and beyond. Uh, so really unique opportunities that we have here in Milwaukee Lutheran. As your students come in, um, one of the things we, we pride ourselves on is called the Red Knight Institute. And we began this a couple years ago. What the Red Knight Institute is, it's an uh, academic support system basically uh, for our students. Freshman, sophomore year, um, they're in seminars. Uh, we're gonna dive into this deeper. That builds upon their foundation of students. Um, and then when they get to their junior and senior year, as you see on the screen there, there are five academies that we offer that our students are able to get involved in. Uh, Career Academy, where students, uh, again, learn maybe be trades, military, uh, who are unsure of maybe what they wanna do, we're able to dive into more Career Academy skills. Our Honors Academy for our students who are bright and the, are bright and the best, uh, we take them on college tours, uh, extra extreme test prep, leadership skills. Our Free Enterprise Academy for those students who want to go into entrepreneurship, start their own company, uh, capitalism types of ideas. Art Academy for students who are interested in the arts, um, building their portfolio, getting into internships while they're students here, um, and just sharing their growth. And then our Urban Education Academy. Uh, we love to educate our kids and we need more help for that to continue to happen. And so we inspire, try to inspire your students uh, to, to be teachers as well, uh, so we can give back and really change the world that we live in. Um, we're going to dive into this more in just a few minutes, uh, but this is just a brief overview of what we have here to serve uh, your student each and every day. 
Thank you, Mr. Barr. Appreciate all those words. Um, that's a lot in a couple of minutes. And um, it's a lot because we have a lot going on here that's, I think, really great, but also allows for each student to do their own thing. Um, we know that God's created all of our children, all of his children to be super unique and have different gifts and talents. And um, we really think that that's one of our strong suits here. And that's to make sure they feel like they can find their place, find their path so that when they leave here, they're gonna, they're gonna feel confident that they can um, have a great life and support a family if that's their case down the road or even just themselves. Um, but that individualized education is gonna be available to them here. Um, in the interest of time, I'm gonna do a really quick admissions spiel. And there might be some of you who came on just to hear this. Um, and so I'm gonna, like I said, I'm gonna go pretty quickly and it's a lot of information. But I, again, I wanna reassure you that uh, we will be sending this all out to you. Um, please know that I'm accessible to you at any time, either email or phone, and I will provide those to you as well. Um, but I want to talk quickly about how do you become a Red Knight? If you're interested in doing so, um, we would love to have you walk through the process, and we want to try to make it as easy as possible. Um, and we know that every high school does it a little different, so I want to try to make sure you understand how we are um, walking through the admissions process for your students. This red box on the screen is, is kind of the best snapshot of what that might look like. Um, first step is to apply online. Our application is free. And when you do that, you're going to start the second step, which is to sign up for the placement exam. We do require all of our students to take a placement exam here. Um, and right now we have our first test coming up on Saturday. Um, I'll get into that in a second, but um, you do need to sign up to take that test sooner than later. There's two options, one in November, one in December. Um, after you take the test, we're gonna send you the results with a letter stating your next steps. And in that letter, if you get academically accepted, you're gonna get the next steps and what to take care of um, down the road. If you don't quite get a qualifying score on the test, your next step letter will give you options as well. So um, that next step letter is important, but you don't receive that until after your score from your placement test is um, sent out. Um, then we're gonna talk about the payment. So that's kind of the academic side of things. Later down the road in February, we're going to deal with um, how do you pay for high school? And there's going to be a lot of people who are blessed to be a part of the choice program. I'm going to talk about that a little bit here in a second. And then if um, you are a family who is going to be a tuition paying family, um, those are things that I want to talk to you about as well. So that's kind of the general overview, but here's a little bit more in detail and I'm going to try to be brief. It's gonna be a lot of words on your screen, I'm sorry, but just know that we'll give this to you so you don't have to um, panic if you don't even get through all of it reading. Um, this sheet is gonna be sent to you. This is all the steps on how to become a Red Knight. Basically reiterates in a little bit more detail what I just shared with you um, from that red box. Just gives you kind of a little bit more details. And um, just know that all of the steps have to be complete, both the academic application, placement test, and the financial side, which is either going to be tuition or the choice program. Um, when you want to apply, if you haven't already, you're going to visit our website, uh, milwaukeelutheran.org. There's an admissions tab, and you're just going to click on the Get Started page, and the application link is right there. And again, our application is free to do so. Here's a visual of what that will look like. And you just are going to click on, on that link that says click here to apply online through TADS. It'll probably take you about five minutes. We do recommend that a parent is there to help with that because there's gonna be a lot of information that a student may not know. So it probably is best served to be done by a parent or a guardian. I talked about the placement test a little bit. Uh, we need you guys to take it if you wanna be a student here. So two options. One I mentioned is this Saturday. For those of you that have already signed up for it, um, you should hopefully know that is now a virtual test. We originally hoped to do it in person, but obviously that's not um, going to happen. So we're doing it virtually. So you um, will be getting the link if you've already signed up, but if you haven't and really want to get it out of the way, you have until tonight to do so. How do you sign up? By applying. So please make sure um, if you want to get that taken care of that you write down that milwaukeelutheran.org um, email address and go to the admissions page and apply tonight. You can still get in under that deadline to get the testing link on Saturday morning. Um, our second option, if it's just too quick of a turnaround or the date just doesn't work is December 5th. Again, that test will be virtual, but um, I can't reiterate enough that you cannot be a Milwaukee Lutheran student if you don't take this placement test. Um, so please sign up to do so um, at your earliest convenience and we hope um, that we can knock that step off of your admissions checklist. Um, as I briefly mentioned, there are then two financial steps that need to take place. And um, 
They have to be done starting in February 2021, so you have a couple months yet. But if you're a tuition paying family, um, the tuition for next year's um, entire year is $9,250. Um, if you looked around in the other schools in the area, you'll notice that that price is uh, considerably lower than others. And we um, pride ourselves in the fact that we want to make giving kids a great education in a Christ-centered environment affordable for families. Um, so if that's something that's um, relevant to you, please, please reach out to me and I, I would love to walk you through that process. Um, if you are blessed to be a choice family or you think you might be eligible to be a choice family, just know that you want to put February in your calendars of 2021. If you are currently a choice family in your school, please know that you do still need to reapply. Every family has to reapply every single year. So um, you need to make sure to do that. Um, if you're reapplying, you only have to prove residency after you submit the application. If you're a new family, then you're going to need to do a little bit more to prove income as well. Um, I'm going to just reiterate on this slide. It's a lot of information, but if you live in the city of Milwaukee, you may qualify for the Milwaukee Parental Choice Program, and you want to apply between February 1st and the 22nd. That's going to be super important. I will tell you that we filled up all of our seats in that first enrollment period. Um, last year, and we had a pretty extensive waiting list that um, went into the hundreds. So that first period is super important if you are hoping to be a student here next year, February 1st to the 22nd. It doesn't matter if you apply on the 1st or the 3rd or the 5th, it just has to be between that time frame. If you live outside of the city of Milwaukee and you think you might qualify for what's called the Wisconsin Parental Choice Program, your enrollment period is starts February 1st at the same time, but it does go a little bit longer, April 15th. Um, all this information, again, I'm sending to you, um, so don't worry about writing it down. If you have a student who might have an IEP or you think might qualify for our special needs scholarship program, we do offer that here in our building as well. Um, Mrs. Linda Colbert is the head of that program, and her and I would love to walk you through that process if that admissions route is something that um, is applicable to your family and your student. Here's just a quick screenshot of last year's income limits. The, what, the table on the right is if you are living in the city of Milwaukee um, and the family size and income that might help you qualify. The table on the right is if you are living outside of the city of the Milwaukee um, and um, might want to see if you qualify for the WPCP program. The new, link, the new income limits are usually released in January and um, we'll certainly have those available as soon as the Department of Public Instruction releases those numbers. This is a sheet that you will be sent. It walks you through what I just said in uh, a lot of detail. So rest assured that we'll walk through that process with you both over the phone, through email, but also through our paperwork. So this is kind of a general outline of what to expect through those choice programs and dates, important dates and such. So again, since I can't ask your, or answer your questions in person, um, if you have them, please direct them to T. Reckley or D. Jenke. Um, we're gonna move forward now to our academic programming. We're running just a couple of minutes behind. So for those of you that have joined us for the opening session, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we really appreciate your time. Uh, we really hope that you consider staying on to learn more about academics for the next 20 or so minutes, and then we'll move into athletics a little bit deeper starting at seven. Um, but if your time doesn't allow, um, thank you so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. And um, again, we're here to serve you. So please reach out if you um, have any questions and we would be happy to walk you through that process. Uh, thank you again. And um, I'm gonna throw it over to Mr. Barr. Mr. Barr is here to kind of start us off with our um, academic session. And we're gonna dive a much um, deeper look into the stuff that we have here at Milwaukee Lutheran, especially with the academic side. Thank you, Ms. Janowski. Um, and again, if you're staring at the screen right now, I'm going like, I know that guy. Who is that guy? I am the Quaker Oatmeal Man. And if you ever need to look, just look at it. You may see it on your oat cereal or life cereal. I am that person. My kids told me once. So just know that. So I apologize there. But honestly, get your head going all the time. Hopefully you got a laugh out of that. Um, as we dive more into academics uh, here at Milwaukee Lutheran too. Um, I've been here now. This is my fifth year um, at Milwaukee Lutheran High School. Um, in that time, there's just been some amazing kids that have walked through the halls here that we've been able to serve uh, academically. Um, we have sent students to uh, the Military Academy. We have sent students to MIT, one of the five toughest schools in the country to get into. Uh, one of our seniors last year has a full ride. She's down at Rice University in Texas, uh, one of the top 25 uh, schools in the country. 
Uh, we've sent kids to Marquette, to Madison, to colleges all around us. We've sent uh, students to the military. We have students who are working in the trades, in plumbing, in, in the electricians. Um, we have students in all areas of life, which has been so unique for us to have here, but so many success stories for the students in our building. And a lot of that just starts too with just our academic um, foundation that we're gonna lay with your students as freshmen. Uh, and our four uh, core areas of uh, math, science, uh, English and social studies, um, a lot of time we do spend too is, is making sure they've got the testing foundation too as well, um, whether it be the ACT or the SAT to get them going. Um, but I'd love to introduce you to, introduce you to one of our freshman teachers, uh, Mrs. Bonner. Mrs. Bonner teaches civics here um, at Milwaukee Lutheran, and she's going to go a little bit more in depth with you about uh, just that transition from eighth grade to high school in our core classes. So Mrs. Bonner. Great. Thank you, Mr. Barr. Um, as Mr. Barr said, my name is um, Katie Bonner, and I have an amazing and unique opportunity to teach every freshman that comes through the doors at Milwaukee Lutheran. Um, and I just want to share a little bit about the core classes that Mr. Barr had just talked about um, and the different core classes that we offer at Milwaukee Lutheran. So I know as you're looking at different high schools that every high school offers um, a variety of core classes. But I just want to share a little bit about why the core classes at Milwaukee Lutheran are different and what we um, have to offer your child. So um, at Milwaukee Lutheran, we offer a variety of different tracks for, that are tailor-made for your child. As Mrs. Janowski talked about with the um, entrance test, that helps us to know where um, your child fits best, whether it is in the English honors, um, whether it is in algebra for math, whether it is in geometry, um, just really helping your child fit. Um, we also have um, constant communication, whether that's amongst the freshman teachers, just making sure that we are able to touch base with each of the students where we communicate um, really on a daily basis with the academic advisors, just to make sure that your child um, is receiving the best individualized learning and their best opportunity at Milwaukee Lutheran. So um, as a freshman teacher, um, when the freshmen come into my class and I have anywhere from 20 to 25 students, I know that out of that 25 students, I'm probably looking at anywhere between 15 to 20 different grade schools. Um, and with that, that means that they have each had a different background to what they know when it comes to civics and when it comes to government, or if you're in an English class, what you have gotten in that or in math. Um, so I work really hard to develop a baseline in my civics class. Um, I really work to teach all students um, and to make sure that they are getting the best education. Um, in the core classes, we work hard to keep students organized. Um, as a freshman teacher, I know that it is very hard for students to come and have eight different teachers, to have eight different subjects. And some students are used to it from their middle schools and some aren't. And so it's my job to help prepare each student and to help them feel success their first semester. Um, so in the core classes, we work hard on organization. We do that through um, the school issued planners, really stressing the need for the students to use them. Um, we also will do binder checks. Um, we also, during those binder checks, we show them, okay, your homework needs to go here. Your quizzes need to go here. Your do now is here. And really helping them understand that organization is important, not only for freshman year, but then that can carry on into sophomore, junior, and senior year. Um, we also work hard to develop relationships. Um, with the students so that they feel really comfortable reaching out and asking for help. Um, our goal is to help freshmen really assimilate and to be part of the Red Knight community right off the bat as quickly as possible. Um, today I was just talking to a student who um, now is a junior and she shared with me that she loved her freshman year. Um, she really enjoyed being part of a large group of like 250 students and she said that it took just a very short time for her to adjust. Um, she really appreciated that teachers would reach out and ask her if she needed help. Um, and so she just really enjoyed her freshman year and I can't believe that she's already a junior actually. So I just wanna quickly wrap up by saying that I'm really excited to meet each and every one of you um, next year as I will be teaching you for civics. So thank you, Mr. Barr. Thank you, Mrs. Bonner. I think one of the, the funny things too is Milwaukee Lutheran's a big family and Mr. Ellenberger said earlier how he's an alum of Milwaukee Lutheran. Mrs. Janowski, who's been talking a lot, is also an alum of Milwaukee Lutheran. Mrs. Bonner is an alum of Milwaukee Lutheran High School. 
And the next person I'm in, in can I introduce to you, um, one of our art teachers, Mr. Creighton, who's going to talk to you more about the electives that right. we offer here at Milwaukee Lutheran. He is also an alum of <laughs> yes. Milwaukee High School. So, Mr. Creighton, if you please. Absolutely. So hi, I'm Mr. Crane. I'm one of the art teachers here at Milwaukee Lutheran, so one of three. So we have a very rich arts program here at Milwaukee Lutheran. So if you are very into music, uh, we, we have an, an awesome uh, choir program that's really ingrained in the culture of the school and they help to lead uh, chapel and also just in regards to our, um, our bands too as well, uh, both programs uh, go out to various schools and churches in the community, but they've also taken tours all across the, the U.S., so whether that is Florida or, um, or Texas or even Hawaii. Uh, but the cool thing about the school and the, the programs we have in regards to that side of the arts is even if you don't have a large skill set coming in, they can teach you that skill set. So as an incoming freshman uh, with choir, you can take men's or women's choir and then bel canto and then also uh, jubilee and kind of develop your skills as well and same thing with our band we have a red knight band if you've never played an instrument before but then you can learn those skills and then take other band levels after that and if you like to play the drums we do have an awesome drum line that you can also be a part of um, and so as me as being a visual art teacher so we have three paths you can take um, as an art student at Milwaukee Lutheran. Uh, so just try all three. Uh, but uh, so we have our traditional art classes, which is what I teach. So drawing and painting. And we also incorporate um, a little bit of illustration. So if you're really into anime and manga and cartoons, we incorporate that digital aspect too as well. And then also, if you like working with computers, we have an awesome uh, design department here at Milwaukee Lutheran. So you can take the introductory class as a freshman and then take really awesome classes like animation and make short films, uh, graph design, so you can design products. And we even have a game and web design class, which is really cool. And then if you like working with your hands and getting a little bit dirty during the school day, uh, we have an awesome uh, 3D art uh, program too as well, where you can take uh, creative crafts and also ceramics where you can learn to make things like a bowl you can eat out of, which is really cool and basis and things like that. The neat thing about our art program at Milwaukee Lutheran is not only can you take art classes to develop your skills, we have some uh, tracks that can help you understand what it means to be an art student and also an art professional. So we have the Art Academy where essentially you can take what you learn in those art classes and then learn what a professional does in the community. So we do have speakers who come in, uh, in the, from the community, but also just across the, the US uh, too as well, where essentially you can learn what it means to be a professional. And then as a senior, you can apply to be involved in an art internship and then work with a professional designer or artist in the community, which is really awesome. The idea of being able to do that at the high school level is, is so important and so unique because it's something that you don't really see at any other high school and also the idea of being able to develop a portfolio if you'd like to pursue art at the college level. And then we have something called Lutheran Printing Services too as well. And the really unique thing about that is it's a class, an art class, but it's also a business. So students are able to design uh, products. They're able to then cut them down and print them out and then also take care of the business side of that so you can learn what it really looks like to be an art professional but in a school setting. So you get the best of both worlds, so you get a feel for what it looks like. Um, and that's really the unique thing about our art program, the idea of being able to be creative and use your God-given skills and grow those skills, be a part of our art community, but also to understand what it means to be an artist post high school at Milwaukee. So excellent. Sorry if I was muted. You're looking at me like, who is he talking to? Um, but thanks to Mr. Creighton. Um, so many of our electives too, along with the arts, we do have classes in, in tech ed, in business, um, and just in many other areas to get your students uh, uh, just a deeper appreciation of education, but to individualize the education as well too. So thank you, Mr. Creighton. Another big area for our students though too, especially right now in the world we live in is mental health and our students being um, just, just mentally healthy. Um, with so many different things of, of going on um, in the world. It's a big piece of us. And so I'd like to introduce you to our, our school counselor and another Milwaukee Lutheran alum, Mr. Chip Wiley.
Thanks, Mr. Barr. Uh, as Mr. Barr said, my name is uh, Chip Wiley. I'm the school counselor here at Milwaukee Lutheran. Um, and I want to talk to you a little bit about what we do um, to help students with their emotional well being. Um, one thing, and it's a huge blessing for us this year, is we actually do have another school counselor in the building um, for the first time. So that's, uh, and her name's uh, Allison Sterling. Um, and she's been meeting with, with students primarily in groups, um, but she will do some one-on-one -on -one stuff with, with students as well. So a little bit of our, our role here at Milwaukee Lutheran has a lot of different parts. Um, some of that time is used to discuss academics and plan for the future, um, but a lot more of our time is used to uh, talk with students on things other than academics. Um, I always tell kids that I'm here to talk about or help with anything that you need. Um, and I know that Sterling is the exact same way. Uh, often our focus of conversations ends up being a situation that might be difficult for them at home, um, a relationship that needs mending, uh, possibly some kind of pre-existing thing with, uh, with, your, with the student, um, anxiety, depression, something like that. We, uh, we work very hard with those students to, to make sure that we can improve their situation here um, so that they're as successful as they can be. Um, in addition, I, I do this a lot. So I advocate for those students with teachers. Um, oftentimes, it's teachers and students don't see eye to eye with, uh, with different situations. Um, so I try and, and be a, an unbiased uh, person in that and try and come up with, uh, with a solution that works for everyone. It doesn't happen all the time, but, uh, but we, we keep working on it. Um, we also can provide outside counseling uh, resources and some, uh, some connections there. Um, and then with that, we're kind of the go-between between those outside uh, resources and, and the teachers and school here. We don't want, uh, we don't want our, our students to fall behind. Um, so we are kind of, uh, kind of working on, on both sides there. Uh, really, at the end of the day, we just want to be there for our students, uh, make sure that they're cared for and loved and know that they have somebody in the building that they can talk to no matter what. Um, whether that's, whether you know, they're having a bad day and they need to vent, their uh, significant other, you know, had some issues, whatever the case may be. Um, that's just, that's, that's my job. I just want to be here for all the kids and, and be, uh, be somebody that can support them. So thank you for your time. And uh, I look forward to, to seeing some of you in the fall. Thank you, Mr. Wiley. Um, Mr. Wiley too is, is the gentle giant. If you've ever seen Mr. Wiley, he's about six feet, eight inches tall. Um, and so uh, it's one of those guys too, you can't miss him. So students, when you're looking for the counselor guy, he's the massive guy that walks down the halls, but a gentle giant at heart for sure, a true servant of Christ. Um, a big thing too, Milwaukee Lutheran does, different from a lot of other schools, we take time each and every day to, to build your, your son or daughter academically, um, just as a better person. Um, and so we do this in the Redden Institute, as we mentioned before. Um, three of those days, Mr. Kirsch mentioned really early on, are, are chapel days. So we spend time every day, uh, those three days uh, in chapel and worship, uh, growing their, their faith and, and their, um, their spiritual life. The other two days a week, we, we do what we call the Redden Institute. Um, and one part of it is, is in family group, building the culture of the school. And the other side is, is in advisory, um, building them up foundationally. And so I'd like to introduce you to one of our counselors, our academic advisors, Ms. Sinclair. Um, another Milwaukee Lutheran alum working here in Milwaukee Lutheran. So Ms. Sinclair. Yes, good evening, everyone. Um, as you said, uh, I'm a Toy Sinclair alumni here from Milwaukee Lutheran, and I am one of the sophomore advisors. Um, and then the freshman advisor that you all will primarily be working with next year would be Dante Gutter. But as Mr. Barr said, there are two opportunities that we have outside of chapel, one of them being our Red Knight Institute, also known as your freshman seminar or sophomore seminar. And during that opportunity, you will meet with two teachers, kind of go through your schedule, learn how to check your grades, get that additional academic support in a smaller group setting. And then the other piece is our family group, where that will meet on the opposite weeks of our Red Night Institute. And that's kind of a cohort that you have with the, with the rest of the students in the building. Our freshmen through seniors are together in smaller groups. And during that time, you have an opportunity just to kind of connect and have a, a greater sense of belonging with everyone else in the building. So you're with a teacher, you have leaders that are anywhere between sophomore, juniors, and seniors, and going through different topics as far as, you know, maybe what's going on with life and just having that greater sense of being a part of Milwaukee Lutheran and what it means to be a Red Knight. So those are two things that you can look forward to as you make that transition into coming into Milwaukee Lutheran next year. 
Thank you, Ms. Sinclair. Again, this is time to, to build upon your, your, your students' uh, skills here. As we kind of finish up, the last person I'll introduce you uh, to uh, is Mrs. Steinke. Mrs. Steinke, Steinke is our Dean of Academics, um, and she's the, the junior senior counselor, and she finishes kind of the ending of your child's um, education time here in Milwaukee Lutheran. She is not an alum, but her husband is an alum of Milwaukee Lutheran, so Mrs. Steinke. Thank you, Mr. Barr. My uh, husband's parents are also graduates of Milwaukee Lutheran, so we're trying to keep it in the family. A couple of our kids are as well. Um, so like you said, I'm Mrs. Steinke, and I am uh, privileged to work with the whole academic advising team here at Milwaukee Lutheran. And as advisors, our team serves not only as a point of contact for each student, but also for each student's uh, teachers that they are directly working with, and also each student's family. Um, as Mr. Wiley mentioned, there are times where we need to communicate not just with the student um, about academics, but what might be going on behind the scenes or things that might be playing into how um, academic life is going for them um, and the way that their life is just going in general. And so we try to communicate about um, not just the academic side of each student, but their whole life and how that works into their success here as a Red Knight. Um, you will have your advisor who works with you. It will be um, an advisor assigned to you. Mr. Gutter was mentioned by Ms. Sinclair. Um, your advisors are here to work directly with you to not only set up your schedule and to monitor your grades, but also to communicate home and be someone who can help set up your plan for success. Um, and so as a freshman and sophomore, our first goal is to monitor your progress closely and to make sure that you are establishing good habits and routines. Um, Mrs. Bonner talked about that earlier, and that's a big part of what we try to do to support the teachers as well, is to help set up those systems for each student. Uh, as you move through our, our school and you get into the second half of your high school career as a junior and senior, we start to really start focusing on uh, what will happen with you and what would you like to do post-graduation. And so that may include things such as college, apprenticeships, uh, trade school, military, joining the workplace, workplace. Mr. Barr talked about that quite a bit already. And so our job is to help, help you identify where your gifts are, what um, talents and gifts God has given to you, and how you can use them in the world to serve him and to glorify him um, in all aspects of your life. And it's our pleasure to work with you and your parents as you set that up. Uh, we really look forward to serving you and your family in the years ahead, and we hope to see you here soon. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out through email or through our chat, and uh, have a great night. I think we're gonna wrap that piece up for our academics. Um, the big thing to know though, is as we finish up uh, this time, as you guys get accepted, as you get your seats um, here as students, in the spring, we will sit down with you one-on-one -on -one and pick courses for next year for your child. Um, and so what we'll do is we'll get through the core classes together, um, your math, science, English, social studies, religion. Then we start to dive into more of those elective courses with you to, to better fit uh, your family and your child um, to where they wanna go. Um, and so no matter which area that is in, again, the tech ed, the career, career stuff, the arts, uh, music, Spanish, foreign language, um, business, uh, every which area we can go, um, we, will, we will set that up for your child to let them be the best version of themselves, but to help them reach their goals um, and make a huge impact in our world. Uh, that's what we do here every day. We share Jesus, we shape lives, and we develop leaders. Um, we're looking forward to getting the opportunity to do that with you and uh, your family again next year. Thank you so much, Mr. Barr. Appreciate all of you guys from the academic advising department and um, the teachers that have joined us. We really, really appreciate all your time. I guess I hadn't really stopped to think about how many alum we had in that department. That's a lot. <laughs> um, but yeah, as, as Mr. Barr mentioned, I am a proud alum myself. And um, that's one of the cool things I think about our, our staff and our faculty and administration is that you really do feel, um, and again, I wish you could feel this in person. I hope you're getting at least a small vibe from the online presence, but um, it is a family here. And um, that resonates with the students. They pick up on that. And then, you know, the student family groups that Ms. Sinclair was mentioning, um, that that continues on through them. And it, it is kind of a unique thing and um, something we're really, um, proud that is kind of just in us. It's not, we don't even have to work super hard at it. It's just who we are. And um, when you're a red knight, you're a red knight. And um, we're proud of that. So um, 
we're going to wrap up our academic session. Um, we're back on track with time. So for those of you that are um, done with um, academic sessions and are done joining us, thank you again for being with us. We really appreciate you joining us tonight. We are going to um, switch gears and dive into our athletic session. I'm actually gonna stop sharing my screen with you for a quick moment. Um, and I'm going to kind of give it over to Mr. Ellenberger, um, who you met earlier, and he's our athletic director. And he's gonna start sharing a PowerPoint that he's gonna go through that um, walks through the athletic program, but also give you an opportunity to meet a bunch of our coaches. And um, I think that you're hopefully gonna get to see some of the personalities of the people that are running um, our athletic programs. And um, I, I think if you have an opportunity um, to just listen, you're gonna hear uh, the love that they have for our students. And um, I'm gonna throw it over to Mr. Ellenberger now. Absolutely, thanks again, Mrs. Janowski. Um, as she said, we're going to talk a little bit of athletics here, and, and athletics is a part of high school that's, um, for many students, a, a very large part of their experience. Um, for some, it's not. It may be on the court or on the field, but it's part of their experience as they attend games, as they talk with um, friends of theirs who are on teams and such, or, or maybe they just come once and, and have a, a wonderful experience at an event. Um, we hope in some way through athletics to serve your family and to provide you a bit of amusement. Um, but our mission in athletics goes much further than that, and we'll speak about that here in a moment. Um, we are going to shift the focus of questions here since the focus is going to be more athletic oriented. Uh, if you do have the desire to ask a question, please direct that question uh, directly to me, John Ellenberger, um, in the chat. I believe that's the name that pops up for me in there. Um, and we'll again try to answer those uh, as best we can. That might be an answer directly to you in the chat. Um, it might be something that we present out loud if it's a question that could be answered by one of our coaches or by me to the group. Uh, or we may follow up individually, as Mrs. Janowski said earlier, with email. So again, please directly send those to me at John Ellenberger in the chat. As I said, Red Knight Athletics is it, it's a, an outgrowth of our school, of our school's mission and vision. And really we're, we're founded on two verses in athletics that we feel real strongly exemplify who we are and who our athletes are. Um, Colossians 3.23, Paul writes about whatever you do, work at it heartily as if you're working for the Lord and not for men. And as we, we help our athletes develop their skills and their abilities and their tenacity and their grit and their respectfulness and stewardship, we do it all as if we're doing it for the Lord all the while leading to what James tells us in James 1 verse 22, be doers of the word and not hearers only. We want our, our witness and our abilities and our talents and our gifts and our hard work to shine to those that watch. Maybe that's a, a friend that just pops into practice and catches five minutes of our basketball practice, or, or maybe it's somebody that watches a, a soccer match on a Tuesday night and gets to see the example that we're setting and the Holy Spirit working through us um, to share that gospel. That's really what we're all about, and athletics is a vehicle to do that. Again, we're, we're built on those core values that you heard spoken of earlier by Mr. Kirsch. Biblical truth, relationships, growth, communication, love. That's what our school's about, and that's what athletics is about here at MLHS. Red Knights have a very strong tradition and a storied history of athletics. If you don't know, our school has been around first as Lutheran High School and then as Milwaukee Lutheran since 1903. We are the oldest Lutheran high school in the nation, uh, and we have a storied history of, of athletes that have come through here and done some great things, both at the high school level and at the collegiate and professional levels. Um, recent successes of our school, um, in 2020, we were privileged to earn the Woodland Conference Championship for boys basketball. Um, in 15 and 16, uh, our baseball teams had tremendous runs. In 15, they were the state champions. In 16, they were the state runners up. Um, our track program has perennially been one of the best in southeastern Wisconsin, if not in the state of Wisconsin, um, with annually students and sometimes the team earning regional and sectional and, and, and state championships or qualifying opportunities. We recently, um, as recently as 2010 and 2011, um, were in the state tournament as a, uh, as a team earning runner-up opportunities in those, in those uh, competitions. Um, again, in 16, we were swim, swim champs in the conference uh, in, uh, in, in the girls' side. And just this fall, uh, our girls' tennis team, co-oping with Lake Country Lutheran, uh, won the Woodland Conference East title um, for, for, uh, for tennis. And our football team has, has perennially been one that competes extremely hard on the, on the gridiron. Um, for a while, we were in the North Shore Conference, which is extremely competitive. And now we're blessed to be in the Woodland Conference, which is also really competitive. And we've had uh, playoff qualifying teams and conference championship caliber um, competing teams in that sport as well. So we've been just blessed recently and throughout our history. 
We've also been extremely blessed by the athletes themselves. On the screen here, you can see a number of athletes of ours that have gone on to NCAA and professional uh, ranks and used their gifts and their talents in those ways to glorify God and in some cases to, to have a really successful career. Um, annually, we have athletes that leave our school as Red Knights and go on to NCAA Division Three, Division Two, Division I um, ranks many of them earning some scholarships for their, for their efforts and for their uh, talents. Um, as you can see, we've had some that have moved on to the professional ranks, including Nick Roach, who's played with the Chicago Bears. Um, on the next slide, you can see a number of our others that have moved on, including Adam Brett Walker, who's played professional baseball in the Twins and other organizations. So I say this not so much to brag as much to say, these kids are awesome. They're blessings to others, and they're able to use those talents and those abilities to take the gospel to many different places, as we hear in scripture, to the ends of the earth. We are, as Red Knight athletes, built on those foundational cornerstones of the school, and we exemplify those in the cornerstones of our athletic program. Things like selflessness and integrity. Uh, we expect our athletes to, to be giving of each other and then also to do the right things. We expect them to be accountable. That's a big part of athletics, owning up when a mistake happens and doing your best to move forward from it and doing the same with your teammates, accepting their short calls at times. Uh, we're respectful of opponents, we're respectful of officials, we're respectful of our coaches, our fans, and appreciative. Uh, we're great stewards of the, the gifts that God has given us, and we're appreciative for the opportunities we have to, be able to use them. And we develop and try to really develop grit in our athletes. When things get tough in practice, in a game, and most importantly in life, can we trust in what God has said, that everything will work out for our good and for the good of those who love God, and his plan is going to go? And that's what grit is as a Christian athlete. At MLHS, we expect that our athletes are going to be leaders. As we've talked about building leaders, athletics is a vehicle to doing that. We, we, we love when we see our athletes representing Christ, our school, our school community, your families with honor and pride and self-control. Uh, we expect that, like we said earlier, they're going to treat everybody with dignity and respect and, and live that gospel of love to those that we play against and those that we play with. Um, High school athletics is a little different than middle school athletics. They practice every day that they don't play as they're developing and building for their competitions. And it's expected that athletes are prompt and ready to go and engaged in those practices each day. Um, we, as God does, expects us to use our abilities as greatly as we can to perform as well as we can. And then obviously to be leaders throughout our school and setting that example that other students will follow. As we said earlier, we've got a robust offering of sports. We mentioned the fall sports early on, as you see on your screen there. Our winter sports, which are just about to kick off here later in November. And then also our spring sports, which will happen later on this spring, um, starting sometime in March, April, or May, depending on the sport itself. We're also extremely blessed to work with Freighter and the Medical College of Wisconsin as they provide our athletic training services. So when athletes have issues with injuries or just strictly development of their athletic abilities, we're blessed to work with a training staff from the Medical College in Freighter. We have an on-site licensed athletic trainer that works with our athletes five days a week and is also contracted for a number of our uh, major events that happen here at school and contests. Our current trainer is Jeff Walter, who's been here for nine years, and Jeff has just been a blessing to our athletes and our families and our, our school in general. Um, so know that your kids are cared for, um, not only when they're working with their coaches, but from a lot of other uh, support and accessory staff as well. And Jeff is one of those wonderful servants for our kids. Our expectations of the athletes, if you haven't already put that together, are very high. And that doesn't mean that every athlete is gonna be the top-notch first-team all-conference athlete, but we know that we can build, we can work, we can grow. And as we do, we're gonna represent God, family, MLHS, and themselves at a very high way. Therefore, Privilege is 100% engaged in athletics here. We expect that our athletes are leaders, and with that leadership does come the privilege of being an athlete. Wearing the cardinal in white is a huge privilege around here, and students really appreciate that opportunity. Um, we expect that our athletes are, are well-versed and doing well in their academics, that they are in class and on time in class each and every day, and that they're, again, setting a great example throughout the school. So we expect that that high example is continued to be set and continued to be followed. On the screen here, you can see just a few of the coaches that we have in our program that are loving your kids and serving your kids and teaching your kids each day. A few of them you're gonna hear of here in just a few minutes. 
this is not nearly the entirety of our coaching staff as we have a ton of volunteers and outside community members that are part of our coaching staffs as well. Many alumni and people that are connected just love this place and they love your kids. And if you can't tell by the smiling faces on the screen, they are so excited to work with each and every kid, including yours, as they become Red Knights and they don the Cardinal in white. What you can expect of our coaches, I hope it sounds simple, but I hope it also sounds powerful because it's who we are. They're gonna be biblical, Christ-centered people they're going to love the heck out of your kids. And that love sometimes is going to be a pat on the back and a, and a kind word because something went really tough for them. And sometimes it's going to be maybe a kick in the pants because they got to run the sprint a little harder. But in any case, we're going to love the heck out of them and build them up. They're going to communicate extremely well and extremely effectively, not only with your kids, but with you so that you know what's happening and what's going on uh, in, the, in the program they're in and, and how things are going with that, with that, uh, with that program. And then finally, they're going to work hard to help your kids grow. Um, one thing that I think is unique to our school is we have some students that start um, a sport for the very first time in their life. They want to try something like cross country or trap shooting or swimming or golf or football, and they've never done it before. And in some schools, that would be, a, you know, having pre prior experience would be a prerequisite to be part of that team. Not here. Our coaches are willing to work with and teach and grow. And some of our most impactful senior athletes are kids who started playing as freshmen and through hard work and dedication, we're able to get there. So know that if you're interested, our coaches are willing to work with you and willing to build, build you to be an athlete that can enjoy those athletic opportunities here. Again, we thank you for being here tonight. I wish we could be in person. I'm so excited to meet you at some point and to see you here, hopefully wearing the red and white of Milwaukee Lutheran. You can see my information on the screen as well as my assistant, Lori Radwan. We'd be more than happy to answer your questions, whether that's tonight or it's later on. Um, so please feel free to contact. Again, if you have a question during this presentation, you can send that question directly to me in the chat and I will begin to respond. Um, but at this time, I'm going to pass it off to our head football coach, Eric Janowski, uh, who has a few words to share with you about the football program. Eric? Thank you, John. I appreciate it. Uh, uh, I am Coach Janowski. I've been uh, at Milwaukee Luther now about 10 total years, uh, 11, five as an assistant, uh, about six now as a head coach. Uh, and in between, I had the uh, privilege to coach some college football for about nine years. So um, I've been since I've been back, this has been uh, an amazing opportunity to get back to be a head coach here. Uh, I'm not an alum, but uh, getting back here kind of feels like being home. Uh, the love for this place, as so many people have said tonight, it's it's neat. It's a neat place. It's a great place. Uh, as mm -hmm. far as football, we have uh, just a quick Quick rundown. I'd love to talk to you all night about football, and others could attest that that have been stuck <laughs> around me. But uh, uh, I will. I will be brief. We have about 75 players in the program, uh, two full levels, uh, full JV and varsity. Uh, we have about 20 to 25 freshmen. Uh, some years, almost 30 that come out to participate, which is an awesome number. That rivals about any school out there. Uh, schools even much bigger than us. Uh, our JV team has won conference the last three years. They do an awesome job. Uh, our JV team is a blend of, a blend of freshmen and sophomores. Uh, and our freshmen come from a variety of football backgrounds, which I, I think is pretty cool. Our freshman coaches, we've got three to four of them do an awesome job of developing them. And uh, we've, got, we've got some players that will come out every year, probably a third of our team, that have never put on pads before. And, and we know that. We understand that. We bring them in. We want them to be a part of what we do. Uh, and I think to – is a testament to how well our coaches developed those kids. We had six, uh, last year we had six kids go on to play college football, uh, over half of those at a scholarship level. So uh, two of those were kids that had come in and never played football before. So we love having them in the program. We want to keep them in the program. We're not here to run them off. We're here to bring them in, love them, coach them, make them great athletes, and, and hopefully uh, have, let them have an amazing time. Um, uh, we do. I think we've got a great program for them. Uh, we are about football year round. We expect uh, you to be involved uh, in our in our program in the off season. We we love multi sport athletes. We encourage multi sport athletes. All of our coaches encourage multi sport athletes, which is awesome. Uh, but if you're not playing a sport, we expect you're with us. You're in the weight room. You're doing your summer training. Uh, we have summer passing leagues, which we're heavily involved in, and uh, we take a team retreat every fall, which is. An awesome experience, uh, something kids ask about. They start asking every spring, when are we going to go? Where are we going? Um, how's it going to work? And um, it's a great team-building activity. And, again, just one of those things I think that uh, uh, creates a special connection with our program. 
Uh, you've met a couple of the other people that we have on, on the staff, Coach Wiley being one of them. I think what's kind of cool is, is most of our varsity staff is actually either in the counseling department or in an administrative role. So we have the time throughout the day. I'm in admissions to spend the time with our kids, uh, our players. We are far more than guys that just show up at 3.30 uh, to, to run, you know, tell a bunch of kids to run wind sprints or do something like that. We are so heavily involved in, in our kids throughout the day, whether it's counseling, whether it's uh, one-on-one interactions and uh, and so forth and i'm i'm really proud of of that connection that that we have with our kids and um one of my biggest passions is is what our kids do after after they leave our program um i i am passionate about getting our kids out even if they don't want to play football I, my background in, in in college has allowed me connections has allowed me the knowledge and the opportunity to help get our kids out uh to to a variety of opportunities when they're done playing here and uh it's one of the most exciting parts of my job as i said we had six kids go on and play last year not to mention uh probably another six or eight that that uh we worked with in finding homes and finding opportunities for them after after the high school level so um again uh we're a welcoming fun program and if you come to one of our games hopefully that shows our kids are into the game they're engaged our sidelines engaged and uh, lastly, what you'll see from our team each and every game, win, lose, play great, play terrible. We're going to get in the circle at the end of the game. We're going to profess our faith in front of everybody, uh, no matter, no matter uh, what we did on the field that night. Uh, and they're going to know that, that we're Christians, that we love God, and that we thank, uh, we thank him for the blessing to be on that field each and every night and to be around those kids. So uh, that's our program. Uh, please, I highly encourage you to, to reach out, get in touch with, with me if you ever want more information. As I said, I'm in admission, so I may have already had contact with your your uh, son, but uh, please feel free any time to follow up. Call, email, would love to. So thank you very much. Thank you very much, Coach Janowski. You can tell your passion comes through for not only <laughs> sport, but for your kids as well. Um, there was a question that came into the chat uh, about uh, costs of sports and, and is sports covered by tuition. So we'll address that now. Uh, there is a $40 sports fee per sport that an athlete plays. So for instance, if you're going to go out for football, each athlete that, that goes out for football pays the $40 sports fee, um, which I will say is significantly lower than most other uh, schools that you would attend. Some have those fees in the hundreds of dollars. Um, and then in, in certain cases, a sport may have an additional uh, cost, for instance, in my sport of baseball, um, the team baseball cap, the player purchases because that is something they keep for the next four years. Um, many coaches, I will say, uh, engage in fundraising to try to raise enough money to keep costs low. And that's part of our mission in the athletic department as well, is to try to make athletics affordable. Um, so hopefully that answers that question at this point. Uh, we're going to pass it off next to our uh, women's basketball coach, Ms. Barr. Ms. Barr, take it away. Hey, what's going on, Red Knights? Uh, my name is Stephanie Barr. I'm the girls' basketball coach at Milwaukee Lutheran. I'm coming to you from our home floor. It's set up a little different right now. Clearly, it's not set up for basketball games, but um, in a week, we finally get to kick off our season, and we're coming off of an awesome year last year. We finished fourth in conference. We were 7-7 seven and seven in conference, 9-12 and 12 overall, which was our best finish since 2009. So we were blessed to be led by two players that are returning this year as seniors. They have played together since second grade. If there are any atonement Lutheran kids, Kids that are watching this. Um, Alexis McNack and Jameer Bean are our senior guides, guards that are going to lead us this year. Alexis is going to sign next week with University of Wisconsin Parkside on a full ride Division II. And Jameer Bean um, has been accepted to Michigan Tech and has not decided what she's going to do basketball wise. Um, but we're very excited to be able to have both of those girls back. McNack is a preseason favorite for conference player of the year, which is super exciting for Milwaukee Lutheran girls basketball. I don't know the last time that that happened, but we have a shot at it happening for us this year. So um, a couple things about us. There are three key words that I focus on with the girls. Um, the first one is family. So I guess the best way that I could say that we're, we're family in every single aspect of what we do, but a really big area where we're family is something called family game night. 
we play games all the time. So obviously with COVID, it's going to be a little bit different, but if you can't play Uno, you're going to have a hard time with us. If you don't play cards, if you don't play Sorry, if you don't play Monopoly, we play games all the time. Um, we play games before we play basketball games. So if you see my team in the bleachers, that's what they're doing is like their pregame routine. But we're very big on investing in each other on the court, off the court. So if there's something that one of our girls is involved in, if it's choir, band, musical, you name it, we're going to be there for each other. So family is a big part of what we do and how we treat each other, but and also how we connect off of the floor. The second part of it is service. Uh, this year it's going to be a little bit more challenging, but we still have found some creative ways to be able to serve and to serve others. Last year we served the fire department, the police department, the local homeless, and schools and churches around us, and we were able to do that during the season. But it's not just about serving our external community, but it's also serving um, our teams and our, our team and our family, and then also inside our school. But serving one another um, and showing service to our Lord and the community around us is a huge part of what we do. And the last thing is accountability, which is um, our team theme. It's our program theme. It's not going to change as long as I'm the coach here, which is Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. So it's not just accountability with peer to peer. It's also accountability for me to them as their coach. And then also for them to me as players. So accountability, service, and family are massive parts of what we do inside the program. And when you focus on doing those things, well, it's crazy what can happen on the basketball court. I'm really, really proud of the girls academically. Last year, our senior average GPA was a 3.8. Our team average GPA was over a 3.2. And in the off season, I had four players ask me to write letters for National Honor Society, and they were all accepted. So it's super exciting to know that we're going to have potentially six varsity basketball players that are also on NHS, knowing that they're getting it done in the classroom, and they're also getting it done on the floor. If you want to talk about team identity, our girls are gritty and they're tough. We were the 5-6 club last year with one tall girl. We're probably going to be that again, but we are going to be in your face, um, and we're going to be on top of you when we're playing on the court. So really, really tough, really, really physical, like to play an up-tempo game. However, I don't look at it as, oh, this is my system. This is what I'm doing. It's what do I have? How can I get the best out of them for this year and use their gifts to um, the best of my ability? So we'll be able to consistently be adaptable with what you bring to the floor and help you continue to grow and develop as a player. So it's really, really hard right now not being able to see you guys, not being able to interact with you, not being able to come to your games, um, not being able to have you come to our games. But it's super exciting to know that there are great things happening here with Milwaukee Lutheran Girls Basketball. And I hope that in some capacity, you'll be able to come and check us out this year. Thanks, Coach Barr. If you guys no can keep up with her energy is a challenge. <laughs> so get in and be part of what's going on there. Next, we're going to toss it over to our track and field coach, Coach Darnell Bennett. Welcome, Coach. Let's hear a little bit about what you and the track stars are doing here at MLHS. All right. Greetings, everybody. Red Knight family. Thank you so much for um, uh, tuning in tonight. Um, first things first, um, I'm not an alumni, but I feel very welcome now. I feel like it's totally family there. I've had a lot of friends come through there. Uh, a family that actually graduated in the late 70s and early 80s from Milwaukee Lutheran and a cousin who just recently graduated. So um, I'm very much invested in uh, to Milwaukee Lutheran High School. Um, track and field, uh, this will be my third year there. Um, head coach of the girls and the boys and have some great assistants and um, yeah, like I said, this will be my third year and we missed last year due to the COVID, but I felt like we were going to do some great things uh, moving up to Division One. Uh, Division One was uh, pretty tough for uh, small schools like us, but um, I feel like we've been very competitive. Uh, our team scripture is Philippians 4.13. Uh, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. All right. And, and, and in most cases, uh, dealing with athletes, um, Sometimes we're dealing with uh, mental toughness at the moment, or it may be a weakness uh, before a race or whatsoever. And we have to, you know, use that scripture and, and know that, that, you know, we're doing this all for the Lord in the first place, and he will uh, see us through this. Um, also, I had to write down some notes because I wanted to talk about a few things. Um, the goal of the team is to uh, athletically and academically prepare them, uh, well, prepare them athletically for meets and also academically for after uh, high school just as well. Um, one of the things that is very dear to me is education and also dealing with them outside of track and field. 
but just dealing with the whole person. Um, I, I was a kid that basically came up that needed to do more things outside of the house to give myself an opportunity to succeed. And track and field was definitely one of them. I played basketball just as well. Um, but, you know, just, let me see, I got saved in 1988. So I'm, I'm gonna go there with that as well. It, w it was only God that allowed me to get to where I am and well, where I was, but where I am today, which also being a, a USA certified track and field coach, but also doing a lot more mentoring in our community, um, partnering with fraternities and sororities just as well, um, doing back to school drives uh, whatsoever. But um, we, we definitely want to build each other, build on our uh, strengths and build on our weaknesses. Uh, we have coaches that for different areas, uh, let's say uh, hurdles. We're not coaching hurdles. We're coaching the hurdler. We're, co we're coaching the person. We want that person to um, maximize their uh, opportunities within that particular event and also experience other events just as well. So um, also in my first year there, I want to touch on this. I came to the team probably the third day <laughs> once uh, the season started and I was dealing with about probably 70 different kids, 70, 70 kids whatsoever. And they welcomed me and it, w it was a lot of love. And through, through the uh, season, it was definitely uh, some challenges, but ultimately we made it to the state tournament in my first year. And a lot of kids first year running track just as well and doing a particular events, um, two relay teams for the, uh, for the girls varsity and, to relay teams for the boys varsity, as well as a high jumper and a girls hurdler and a boys hurdler. So we definitely um, um, made people notice us, but it was through the grace of God, definitely, because uh, it, it could have went anywhere, but my experience and my background in track and field uh, helped propel us uh, forward. And uh, also, I, you know, we try to teach the children uh, definitely accountability, uh, advocating for themselves, I'm, I'm, I'm not a person that's actually in the building. So I have a thread for all of us to have conversation uh, when it's a struggle, even within school. So, you know, I may get a text from one of the athletes and I'll kind of guide them on how they need to deal with their teacher, probably, you know, about a grade whatsoever. They, they feel like they might not, you know, get the grade for track and field. So just from my experience in high school and even college uh, running track my freshman and sophomore year, uh, I just want to be able to, you know, give them my experiences guide them and, and help them just totally advocate for themselves. And there was a lot of success with that and wrote a few letters for Concordia University for some of the uh, athletes. So um, it's, 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 it's a fun experience. We do a lot of team building. We did that a few times over the summer, um, distant wise, but they definitely uh, called me FaceTime and, and it was just fun experience. So I'm always in touch with the majority of the athletes. We have Damon Joy coming back, uh, who is just a, a pure athlete. Aaron Everett, um, Amanda Steinke is a hurdler, Jamira Bean, who has a chance to do great things in the long jump this year as well. She, she has a chance to make it to the state finals and actually play. So I'm uh, very happy about uh, the, the season that's upcoming for us. So uh, thank you so much for uh, listening. I didn't want to ramble on too much, but there's so much I could talk about, especially when it comes to track and field. And uh, definitely love the kids and want them to have a great experience. Thank you, Coach Bennett. We can see your heart and, and how you care about the whole kid. And good luck to you guys, especially to those athletes you're speaking of as they enter their senior seasons. As we continue forward here, we're going to speak and hear from one of our uh, female coaches here on staff that leads our cheer program. So, Coach Crystal, take it away. All right. Um, are you guys able to see me? Okay, great. So my name is Coach Crystal. I am the head cheerleading coach here at MLHS. Um, we have a motto that we lead with a cheerful life. Our theme comes from Philippians 4.4. 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We are the spirit inside of MLHS. The MLHS cheer squad is made up of dedicated and enthusiastic athletes. Our athletes devote a significant amount of time to be a part of our program. And we strive to be at our best always for the glory of God. 
our coaches, which my, is myself, I'm the head coach. And then we, I also have a co-coach, Miss uh, Coach LaDiamond, who is um, an alumni of ML. I am not an alumni, but I do have a lot of family members that have come through ML and I am a current parent of a student at ML. So um, I feel as if ML is my home too. <laughs> So our coaches have an extensive experience in coaching cheerleading. We are dedicated to excellence, both athletic and academic. Um, our athletes, um, we, we strive to make sure that we maintain um, and help them to maintain their faith and education. And those are two things that are of utmost importance to myself and the other coach. We are dedicated to helping our athletes have a successful high school career. Um, I'd like to say that um, the girls are really working hard at establishing themselves as far as being able to be a competing cheerleading squad. We believe that cheerleading is a sport, just like any of the other sports in the building, and we are dedicated to um, reclaiming some of our, um, our competition status in, in the years to come. Last year, our girls were um, featured in the Play Hard Teen Sports um, spread that they did for National Cheerleading Week. You can look at some of that footage on our um, social media pages as well as going to play hard teen sports and seeing some of the spreads on some of our seniors last year. Um, we firmly believe that as a cheerleader we have two very important roles. That is to cheer and bring the spirit and then that is to be a leader. Sometimes when you, go, when you guys go to some of the athletic games, the first thing you see or the first representation you see of ML is a cheerleader. They have on that cardinal uh, a cheer uniform and they're coming and they're representing. And so that's the first thing you see. So it is very important that our young ladies represent ML, um, you know, with the utmost um, spirit and respect at all times. Um, MLHS Cheer offers one varsity team open to freshmen through sen uh, seniors. Practices are normally two to three times a week. Um, it, I'm not going to lie. It's a commitment. It's a year-round commitment. Um, we look at running a summer camp every summer um, for grades first through eighth grade and a day clinic for fourth through eighth graders. Um, so that's something that we weren't able to kick off this past summer due to COVID, but we look forward to being able to get that going in the summers to come. Um, our, ten, our team attend various camps throughout the summer and throughout the season, and we work with other colleges and other professionals to come in and work with our girls. I'm very much involved with all of the girls. Um, I take an interest in them. Um, any of my girls that I've worked with can tell you, um, I've, I've been there for a year and a half now, but I take an interest in the young ladies, making sure that they, they run a well-balanced um, life, you know, that they keep God first, they keep their academics um, at the top of their game, and they also represent themselves well. I'm there to mentor them, I'm there to be an example for them. Um, and I love cheer. I cheered in high school and I cheered in college and it's fun. Um, you develop a sisterhood with, with your teammates and it's something that you build lifelong relationships. I can look back now and, you know, I still have relationships with my high school cheer sisters and I, you know, I want to foster that for the girls that I work with as well. So, like I said, we are the spirit of ML. We are the heart of ML. Um, and I'm happy to be here. If you guys have any questions, feel free to email me, reach out to me, um, and welcome to the Red Knight family. Let's go Red Knights. Thank you, Coach. The spirit of the spirit of ML there, Coach Crystal. Be with us tonight. Just a couple more to go to here. We're gonna toss it over next to our head boys basketball coach, Coach Jackson. Coach Jackson, are you there? Yes, I am. Look at that, there he is. Take it away, my man. How's uh, everybody doing? First of all, I know I can't hear you back, but uh, my name is Marcus Jackson. I'm, a, I'm entering my third season as the head basketball coach in Milwaukee Lutheran. Uh, first of all, it's a blessing to, to get this job. I wasn't really looking when I got the job. It's an absolute blessing. I grew up as a Christian, having to go to church Monday afternoon, sometimes at night, and this job's a blessing for me to be able to talk about God openly, be able to pray openly. So I, I enjoy it. All the other coaches that they spoke before, they've done a great job so far. Uh, my, a little bit about my background. Uh, I played college basketball, first at a junior college in Texas called South Plains. Uh, then I went on to Marquette and played for two years. That's what brought me to Milwaukee. Uh, played professionally overseas for seven years. Uh, and then I uh, 
wasn't really planning on coaching early on. And then I just – it started hitting me later on in my playing career. This has to end one day. I want to continue with the game of basketball, sport of basketball, which I love. And ended up uh, working in a couple of places before and ended up getting into coaching, which I loved a lot. Uh, my first two years, we've had – we've been very successful at all levels. We have three levels, freshman – they call it JV2, JV1, and varsity. JV1 and JV2 have been very successful. I believe JV1 lost one one game last year. Maybe JV2 lost maybe two or three last year. And our varsity in my two years here were 39-9. and nine. In Each and every game, I feel like we had a chance to win. One thing I've been proud about for my guys is we've been in pretty much every game. We fight, we fight, we fight, we fight. There's never any give up in my guys. That's how I push. I push them to be great. I don't push them to be mediocre. I push them to be great. Uh, some games when, they, when we win, they may think it's okay, but no, we're trying to get better each and every game. All right, as far as for our, our scripture, for our team, we, my first year here, it was a chapel talking about 1 Corinthians 12 to 26. I texted my coach, assistant coach, I said, this is our team scripture right here. He, he texted me back, I was thinking the exact same thing, coach. So we've had that plastered on our, on our binder for the last few years. It talks about how each part of the body forms one. So I felt like that was perfect for our team there. Uh, and a success of our team, also going back to it, uh, my first year, we had four all-conference player winners, we had, including two first teams. Uh, last year, we had – we won our first conference championship in 35 years, I believe. Uh, and we also had another four all-conference winners, two first teams and one player of the year. We also had a first-team all-state guy, Jordan Weddle, and, a, and an honorable mention all-state in JV on Tolliver. So I'm very proud of those guys. And we have four guys, five guys that went on to college to play basketball. One went on to play baseball with Coach Ellingberger, Coach, that's uh, Danny uh, Perzak. And we also have uh, a couple other guys, one guy that went on to a prep school to play. So I, me, I preach family. Once you're part of my program, once you're with me, we're family. I still talk to those guys often, some of them every week. Uh, some of my guys every week, I'll check on their grades, ask them how school's going, just call them just to check on them. I, I built a good relationship. For me, I don't feel like you can coach unless you have a genuine love for your kids. That's why I'm allowed to snap and get on my kids when I need to, but they know I love them. They can come and talk to me any day of the week. They'll come to my office after I got on them the day before and still talk to me. They know I don't carry it off the court. They know I, I genuinely love them and I care about them. So I'm, I'm proud of that because it's, it's a family thing there. Everybody at ML, all the other coaches have done a great job just building that family atmosphere with each other. Even with, with us, we talk. Me and Coach Bard, me and Coach Janowski, and other coaches, we talk. We enjoy each other's company. We learn from each other. Stephanie asked me a question. I'll ask her a question. So, so that's what we, we're trying to build here at ML with, with all of our programs. We want to be a family atmosphere. We want to be successful. We want to preach God's word. We want our kids to represent us well. We also want to re represent our kids well as coaches. So uh, make sure I didn't miss anything. Uh, oh, yeah, a couple things. In the summertime, we usually have a, fall, a summer league for all levels. All right, this year, because of COVID, we weren't able to do it at all. So usually when you're coming in as a freshman, you have a summer league coach, coach, uh, Coach, my mind, Coach Stern, I'm sorry, our freshman coach, he's done a great job with them. And our sophomore coach, Coach, uh, <clears throat> coach Atkinson, they've done a great job. So usually we'll have that. The COVID has messed everything up, really. We just, we're just we just now getting back into the gym ourselves playing basketball. So it's weird, but our guys are going hard. They're getting ready and pushing them hard, and they're responding well. So we're excited about that. Uh, and that's basically it for now. Uh, we're looking forward to hopefully having a great season. We hope you guys come check us out. And I'm looking forward to meeting you in person very soon. Thanks, Coach Jackson. As uh, Mr. Barr described, uh, Mr. Wiley as the gentle giant. Mr. Jackson is also a, a giant and a gentle one, but you better run those lines pretty hard in his practice. <laughs> uh, last but not least here as a, a friend of <coughs> college teammate of mine at Concordia, but a wonderful blessing to our athletes here leading our athletic development and also our head softball coach, Coach Kyle Barth. Coach Barth, here you go. All right. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm Coach Barth, as Mr. Ellenberger said. I've been teaching and coaching at Milwaukee Lutheran for six years now in many different capacities from boys basketball, baseball, softball, and, and now athletic development. Um, but being able to have a hand in the success and growth of our student athletes is something I'm passionate about and really drives me uh, to come to work every day. Um, over the last few years, we've revamped our PE curriculum. Uh, we offer some courses now during the school day that deal specifically with student athlete development, um, personal fitness, intro to training, and advanced weight training are just a few of them. Um, and usually each semester we have about 100 kids 
spread out throughout those classes and those numbers continue to go up. So it's, it's really encouraging to see as a coach that our kids are really buying in uh, to what we're trying to sell them. And they're, they're making uh, training, physical training, a part of their everyday routine. Uh, we're also working hard as a, as a department, athletic department, to engage our kids in year-round training. We've heard a couple of coaches say those things. Uh, we, we offer an eight-week uh, summer training program over the summer, usually four days a week. Uh, things looked a lot different this past summer because of the COVID shutdown, uh, but we were still able to get about three weeks in of really some small group uh, training, all outdoors. It was great for the kids that were able to participate. Um, we're also working extremely hard to offer time for our kids before and after school as coaches to come in and train. And usually I try to take the lead on that. Um, but as a department, we're making great strides uh, in, in really shifting the culture and mindset around engaging in some serious uh, athletic training. So. Appreciate it very much, Coach Barr. Thanks for your work and getting our athletes ready to roll. Uh, at this point, I'm going to toss it back to Mrs. Janowski, the architect and orchestrator of this whole evening. Mrs. Janowski, take it away. Thanks, Mr. Ellenberger. Um, we obviously are running a little behind on time, but um, so many awesome things to share with you about our athletic programs um, that uh, thanks for sticking with us. I appreciate it. Uh, thanks to all the coaches for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. And I hope that you're uh, hearing some common themes um, that are really staples at Milwaukee Lutheran, family, faith. And uh, we're going we're gonna to really push those things on our, our students. And um, I think that uh, that makes them better people when they leave this place in four years. So um, really, thank you for joining us. I don't want to keep you much longer. Um, I did want to just reiterate one more thing. Um, obviously, we would have loved to have seen you in person. And if you were here in person, you could have taken a tour of our building. So that's a big part of uh, moving this to virtual that you're missing out on. However, um, we were able to put a virtual tour together and I had stu two students help me um, put this tour together and it's up on our website. So I just wanted to encourage you to kind of round out your open house experience to, to visit our website and um, check out that tour since you can't actually take it in person. So um, do that when you have some time, um, maybe not this evening, but down the road. And again, our website is milwaukeelutheran.org, but I will send you a bunch of resources um, after this is over. Probably tomorrow, you'll get an email from us with, with everything that you might need um, that you would have gotten in person when you were here for an open house in person. So thank you so much for joining us. Um, I really appreciate your time. I know that you guys have probably spending a lot of time in front of a screen. Um, with all the adjustments to school and work that um, many people are in front of screens a lot. So I, I am very privileged that you um, chose to join us tonight. Um, we really hope that you would consider Milwaukee Lutheran so your student can learn about um, sharing Jesus, shaping lives and developing leaders firsthand. And um, we really look forward to serving you next year and the years to come. Thank you so much for joining us, everybody. Have a great night.